Hi there, Tony Sycamore here, IG's market analyst for Australia. US equity markets fell into the end of last week on rising tensions in the Middle East and as hotter than expected US economic data sent US yields surging to fresh highs. Today, we are seeing a carbon copy of last Monday's session as the market unwinds some of the safe haven flows put on ahead of the weekend. While we see a great deal of uncertainty lingering over markets in the weeks ahead, we note that Monday is not the day to be short US equity futures, with the S&P 500 closing higher on 14 of the past 15 Mondays since July the 3rd. A positive session on Wall Street tonight may set up a rally into the quarter three US GDP release midweek before another cautious end to the week. Let's take a look at the chart of the S&P 500 now and where we currently stand. The rally from the mid-October 3500 low took the S&P up to this high in late July, around 36.34 in the futures contract. We then got the first wave of a corrective pullback and a rally back up into mid-September. Now, during this mid-September period, we were thinking that there was still another leg lower to unfold, which we were highlighting coming back to this 4250, 4200 support area. That level held, and the initial rebound was quite positive. However, into the end of last week, the S&P 500 is once again eyeing this really important support area reinforced by this 42.35 low in the futures contract and, of course, the 200-day moving average, which is coming in around 42.57. Now, I would allow just a tiny new uh, bit of overlap down through this low here, but if the S&P 500 was really to crack below 4,200, you would have to move aside from the positive bias which we adopted at this point here because the risks would then become for a pullback down towards this 38 50 area. So right now, potentially we've got a green candle setting up for a positive session. As we mentioned, Mondays have traditionally been positive sessions for the S&P 500, but we really need to see the S&P 500 get a push on the upside to negate the possibility of one final push into this area. And of course, if this area fails to hold, we will move aside from that positive bias, which we have been holding. For the NASDAQ, the pitch has been a little bit more murky because the NASDAQ failed to make this final low, which we were looking for, i.e. a wave C low or the third wave of this correction from this 16,062 high. You can see the first wave. This is the second wave. And the wave equality target was coming in around 14,200. That's been reinforced by the 200-day moving average, which is coming in just a smidgen below 14,000. So we've always said with the NASDAQ, there is still potentially a pull uh, back into this area here before it pushes higher. But what we have also said with the NASDAQ is while there's uncertainty as to whether the correction is complete, we would get more definitive certainty arising if it could get above this downtrend coming from the 16,062 high. So let's keep an eye out for a new low coming into this area this week, or alternatively, in the weeks ahead, a break above this downtrend resistance. Thank you for listening. 